The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today as we begin a new week and a new book of the Bible. We begin in the book of Deuteronomy this week. Today is Monday, April the 11th, also Holy Week as we walk through Holy Week as well this week in our church services. Let us hear the word of God on a daily basis and pray together. So for this Monday, April the 11th, let us begin with his word and prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the word of the Lord from the book of Deuteronomy, the first chapter, verses 1 through 8, entitled, The Command to Leave Horeb. These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel, beyond the Jordan in the wilderness, in the Arabah, opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophir, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizahab. It is eleven days' journey from Horah by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. In the fortieth year, on the first day of the eleventh month, Moses spoke to the people of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment to them. After he had defeated Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth, and in Edri. Beyond the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses undertook to explain his law, saying, The Lord our God to us in Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey, and go to the hill country of the Amorites, and to all their neighbors in the Arabah, in the hill country and in the lowland and in the Negeb and by the sea coast, the land of the Canaanites and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their offspring after them. So far the word of the Lord. Through many trials, God raises a new generation in Israel and brings them to the plains of Moab, just east of the Jordan River. The promised land is in sight. God's covenant promise is sure. For God, he keeps his word to his people, including his word to you. Rejoice in the Lord's faithfulness as you share his testimonies with others. The gospel is fresh and precious for every new generation. Let us pray. O heavenly Lord, we praise you and thank you for your faithfulness in Christ our Lord. And in his name we pray. Amen. And now from the book of Deuteronomy, verses 9 through 18 of chapter 1, entitled, Leaders Appointed. At that time I said to you, I am not able to bear you by myself. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, you are today as numerous as the stars of heaven. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, make you a thousand times as many as you are, and bless you, as he has promised you. How can I bear by myself the weight and burden of your strife? Choose for your tribes wise, understanding, and experienced men, and I will appoint them as your heads. And you answered me, The thing that you have spoken is good for us to do. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and experienced men, and set them as heads over you, commanders of thousands, commanders of hundreds, commanders of fifties, commanders of tens, and officers throughout your tribes. And I charged your judges at the time, Hear the cases between your brothers, and judge righteously between a man and his brother, or the alien who is with him. You shall not be partial in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone, for the judgment is God's. And the case that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. And I command you at that time all the things that you should do. So far the word of the Lord. In his great love, God establishes a judicial system administered by God-fearing men selected from among the Israelites. God knows the human heart. God knows that sin brings discord and dissent. And left unchecked, sin can destroy a nation and finally cause eternal separation from God. 
But thanks be to God we have a faithful judge in heaven who wishes not to condemn us, but wishes to deliver us from sin. We pray. O oh Lord, we thank you because we know that on Judgment Day you will see believers through the blood of Jesus Christ and declare us not guilty. In his name we pray. Amen. Continuing in chapter 1, verses 19 through 33, entitled, Israel's Refusal to Enter the Land. Then we set out from Horeb and went through all that great and terrifying wilderness that you saw, on the way to the hill country of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barna. And I said to you, you have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up, take possession as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has told you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you came near me and said, Let us send men before us, that they may explore the land for us and bring us word again of the way by which we must go up and in the cities into which we shall come. The thing seemed good to me. And I took twelve men from you, one man from each tribe, and they turned and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eshcol, and they spied out. And they took in their hands some of the fruit of the land and brought it down to us and brought us word again and said, It is good land that the Lord our God is giving us. Yet you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to give us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Where are, we, where are we going up? Our brothers have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. And besides, we have seen the sons of Ancham there. Then I said to you, Do not be in dread or afraid of them. The Lord your God goes before you will himself fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where you have seen how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son all the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet in spite of this word, you did not believe the Lord your God who went before you in the way to seek you out a place to pitch your tents, in fire by night and in the cloud by day, to show you by what way you should go. So far the word of the Lord. Moses retells the story of the Israelites' rebellion. Although God promised to drive out the Canaanite, the Israelites listened to the ten spies instead, and they recoiled in fear. As a result, an entire generation of Israelites died in the desert. Today, we are wrong to trust the word of others over the word of of God. God gives his word for our blessings and God gives his word to strengthen our faith. We pray. Lord, at those times when we rebel against you, send your spirit to show us the error of our ways. Remember that we are your sons and daughters through holy baptism and sustain and strengthen us by the body and blood of your own dear son, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. In the last of chapter 1 of Deuteronomy, verses 34 through 46, entitled, The Penalty for Israel's Rebellion. And the Lord heard your words and was angered, and he swore, Not one of these men of this evil generation shall see the good land that I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him and to his children I will give the land on which he has trodden, because he has wholly followed the Lord. Even with me the Lord was angry on your account and said, You also shall not go in there. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. And for your little ones, who you said would become a prey, and your children, who today have no knowledge of good or evil, they shall go in there. And to them I will give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn and journey into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. Then you answered me, We have sinned against the Lord. We ourselves will go up and fight, just as the Lord our God commanded us. 
And every one of you fastened on his weapons of war and thought it easy to go up into the hill country. And the Lord said to me, Say to them, Do not go up or fight, for I am not in your midst, lest you be defeated before your enemies. So I spoke to you, and you would not listen. But you rebelled against the command of the Lord and presumptuously went up into the hill country. Then the Amorites who lived in that hill country came out against you and chased you as bees do and beat you down in Seir as far as Hormah. And you returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord did not listen to your voice or give ear to you. So you remained in Kaddish many days, the days that you remained there. So far the word of the Lord. The Israelites' disobedience causes God to withdraw his presence and delay giving men, them, the promised land. After 40 years, God teaches his faithfulness to a new generation and prepares them as a father prepares his dear children. How patient is our Heavenly Father's love and care. We pray, O gentle shepherd, lead us patiently that we may one day cross from death to eternal life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now chapter 2, verses 1 through 25, entitled, The Wilderness Years. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea, as the Lord told me. And for many days we traveled around Mount Seir. And the Lord said to me, You have been traveling around this mountain country long enough. Turn northward and command the people. You are about to pass through the territory of your brothers, the people of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. So be very careful, do not contend with them, for I will not give you any of their land. No, not so much as, as for the sole of the feet to tread on, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. You shall purchase food from them for money that you may eat, and you shall also buy water of them for money that you may drink. For the Lord your God has blessed you and all the work of your hands. He knows you're going through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. So we went on away from our brothers, the people of Esau, who live in Seir, away from the Arabah road, from the Elath and Izin Geber. And we turned and went into the direction of the wilderness of Moab. And the Lord said to me, Do not harass Moab or contend with them in battle, for I will not give you any of their land for possession because I have given Ar to the people of Lot for possession. The Emim formerly lived there, a people great and many, and tall as the Anakim. Like the Anakim, they are also counted as Rephim, Rephim but the Moabites call them Emim. The Horites also lived in Seir formerly, but the people of Esau disposed of them and destroyed them from before them and settled in their place, as Israel did, to the land of their possession which the Lord gave to them. Now rise up and go over the brook Zerid. So we went over the brook Zerid, and the time from our leaving Kadesh Barna until we crossed the brook Zerid was 38 years, until the entire generation, that is, the men of war, had perished from the camp, as the Lord had sworn to them, for indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from the camp until they had perished. So as soon as all the men of war had perished and were dead from among the people, the Lord said to me, Today you are to cross the border of Moab at Ar, and when you approach the territory of the people of Ammon, do not harass them or contend with them, for I will not give you any of the land of the people of the Ammon as a possession, because I have given it to the sons of Lot for a possession. It is also counted as a land of Rephim. Rephim formerly lived there, but the Ammonites call them Zaam Zum, a, pe a, great, a people great and many, and tall as the Anakim. But the Lord destroyed them before the Ammonites, and they dispossessed them and settled in their place, as he did for the people of Esau who live in Seir when he destroyed the Horites before them, and they disposed of them and settled in their place even to this day. As for the Avim, who live in villages as far as Gaza, <clears throat> the Kaphtarim, who came from Kaphtor, destroyed them and settled in their place. Rise up, 
Set out on your journey and go over the valley of the Aaron. Behold, I have given into your hand Shahan the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to take possession and contend with him in battle. This day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you on the peoples who under the whole heaven you shall hear the report of you and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. So far the word of the Lord. God's promise of the land for the Edomites, Moabites, and Ammonites mean that the Israelites must pass farther east. And God leads the charge to drive the Amorites from the land. The Israelites' victory, victories belong only to God. Our victories, too, belong to God. Our salvation is only by God's hand, not our own. By his Son's precious blood, we are justified by his Spirit. We are sanctified. Let us pray. O oh, Father, whenever we are tempted to boast of our own deeds... Let us recall Paul's words from 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 17 and 18. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now lastly for today, Deuteronomy, the end of the second chapter, verses 26 through 37, entitled, The Defeat of King Sihon. So I sent messengers from the wilderness of Kedemoth to Sihon, the king of Heshbon, with the words of peace, saying, Let me pass through your land. I will go only by the road. I will turn aside neither to the right nor to the left. You shall sell me food for money that I may eat and give me water for money that I may drink. Only let me pass through on foot. As the sons of Esau who live in Seir and the Moabites who live in Ar did for me, until I go over the Jordan into the land that the Lord our God has given to us. But Sihon, the king of Heshbon, would not let us pass by him. For the Lord your God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate, that he might give him into your hand as he is this day. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have begun to give Sihon and his land over to you. Begin to take possession, that you may occupy his land. Then Sihon came out against us, he and all the people, to battle at Jehaz. And the Lord our God gave him over to us, and we defeated him and his sons and all his people. And we captured all his cities at that time, and devoted to destruction every city, men, women, and children. We left no survivors. Only the livestock we took as spoil for ourselves, with the plunder of the cities that we captured. From Ara, which is on the edge of the valley of Arnon, and from the city that is in the valley, as far as Gilead, there was not a city too high for us. The Lord our God gave all into our hands. Only to the land of the sons of Ammon you did not draw near, that is, to all the banks of the river. Jabuk and the cities of the hill country, whatever the Lord our God had forbidden us. So far the word of the Lord. The conquest is underway. The stubborn king Sihon places his army in God's path and it is swallowed up as easily as Pharaoh's army was swallowed up in the Red Sea. The Lord fights the battles of his people. We pray. O Lord, soften our hearts and create in us a faith that never rejects your precious word like Sihon and Pharaoh did. Bring us to a richer understanding of how the waters of baptism have drowned the old Adam and made us, made us a new people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue now in prayer using the Pray for Us calendar for the month of April and also our weekly prayers of the church found on back of your weekly April 11 through 16 insert. Let us pray. O gracious Lord, on this Monday, April the 11th, we pray that LCMS members would eagerly participate in Bible studies, small group discussions, and private study. Lord, we ask that each and every one of our members will understand the beauty of the gift of your word. We pray in Jesus' most blessed name. Amen. 
Holy Lord, mighty God, in the triumph of Christ's resurrection, you have revealed your saving will to the whole world. Hear us on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O Holy Lord, mighty God, you have borne the sin of the whole world and given to those marked with death the promise of new and everlasting life. Receive our thanks for Christ's glorious resurrection and bring us with him to our own joyful resurrection and the grand reunion of all your saints, prepared for us in the marriage supper of the Lamb without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, you have established the church as the instrument of your saving purpose and endowed us with the gift of your word and sacrament. Embolden us with your spirit that we may be renewed in witness, sustained in trial, and refreshed through the means of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and sustain them unto the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith, speaking the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray together as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>